Hey guys, it's Saturday the 22nd of October and it's coming up to 10 past 10 in the evening. Now, I've been car booting this morning so I've got a backpack and a carrier bag full of stuff. I didn't bring everything home because I needed it or well, I bought it to go over in the uh, workshop over at Mum's. Um, but before we go through all of this, I've got an announcement to make. Yesterday I launched a brand new YouTube channel. Um, it's called English Gamer 38. Um, so you can probably tell from the name, it's a gaming channel. And it has got a video already uploaded to it. I've got another one ready to upload. It's My Garage. Don't panic, I'm not going to, you know, just do My Garage videos. Um, it's going to be a complete mix. It's going to be some horror games in there, you know, little indie horror games and whatnot. Just a complete mix of games and just me playing them and I suppose reacting to them in a way. The jump scares could be funny. I haven't got a webcam at the minute, but I will probably use one when I've got a replacement. Um, yeah, so I will leave a link to that channel in the description down below, so if you want to, you can go and check it out. Um, I will say the audio on these first two videos is crap. Because I didn't realise my mic was so quiet. I, for a while I could not figure out why. But uh, this evening I've been tinkering around with settings in Windows and Streamlabs and whatnot, and I think I've got it set um, a lot better. The audio is a lot clearer. I've done a few um, test recordings with it. Um, I actually didn't realise how bad it was until I was recording a um, video with a horror game. I was playing a horror game. Um, just a little indie horror game. It cost you about a dollar on itch.io. 616 Games um, produced it. And their audio is quite loud on their games. And it wasn't until I went to edit that video I thought, you can't hear me <laughs> over the game music because the mic is so quiet. Didn't realise it was quite that quiet. Um, but it should all be sorted now. So after the video that I'm going to upload to the channel tonight, everything should be a lot better. Um, yeah, I just sat here thinking, you know, I've got the mic, I've got Streamlabs. Let's put it to some use. Um... I mean, granted I got the mic, well the mic was a Christmas present a couple of years ago actually, but I wanted Streamlabs as well so I could stream to Twitch, which I want to um, get into as well. But I just thought, you know, let's, let's try gaming, you know, doing some gaming videos. And the way I see it, give it a try. If it turns into something great, if it doesn't, Nothing gained, nothing lost. <laughs> so, you know, and I'd rather give something a try than sit here wondering in years to come, you know, what if? What what would have happened if I did try that? You know? So, yep. I'd appreciate it if you'd uh, pop along and maybe consider subscribing. Um, yeah. Right. Just before we get into uh, the car boot stuff, I just want to show you some lamps I picked up in a charity shop. If I can reach them. Um, there seems to be one charity shop in town that always have light bulbs of some description in there. They just seem to get so many donated. I don't know why. Anywho, um, what is it? It's the Priscilla Bacon Cherry. So we have, from Eon, the Mega Man, and I'm sure there was a cartoon character of that same name, like a cartoon superhero. Anyway, it is from Eon. I've not seen one of them. Um, I've seen bigger versions of this, with that sort of, you know, looped over tube style, but not one this big, not a dinky little one. Um, The Sum 09 Compact 2000. Let's try. Oh, it's a 9 watt, which is equivalent to a 40 watt. 
a dingy little bowl. And then I got three of these. These were all a pound each, by the way. It's only cost a lot. They're um, CFLs as well, and they're um, R50s. SES fitting, small letters and screw. I've got three of those. I bought, there was only three there, and I bought all three because I've actually got a floor lamp behind you guys that I bought two years ago actually. I bought it not long after Filthy House SOS had done their filming. Found it again in a charity shop. Can't remember which one though. Um, and I just liked it. So I've sat it between the two. Um, sofas and that's where it's been ever since but I might try these in there and see what that looks like it's got some LEDs in it at the moment but I do find that with some CFLs they some of them do tend to give off quite a nice warm light and I quite like the warm light um, I don't mind cold white light depending on what that light is being used for anyway let's dump these down here out of the way don't worry, they're not getting broken. I know it sounds like it. So, my backpack is actually chock full. In fact, there's something in there that I've got to try and fix. Um, it's actually Mum's laptop. It finally just quit on her. So it's probably had an issue somewhere for a while now, which is why it was running so slow. It was ridiculously slow for what it was. It shouldn't have been as slow as it was, especially when my stepdad has the identical Lenovo laptop. The only difference being is the type of processor. He, his had the Intel, Mum's had the AMD. But hers, it turns on, gives the impression that it's going to boot, and then the screen just goes black, it doesn't do anything. And I've got a cat stuck on my, I did have a cat stuck on my leg. She was chasing it. Now she's still chasing a carrier bag across the floor. Anyway, we'll start with carrier bag, and then I'll bring the um, backpack up here. So, for £10, I've got a Volpix Funko Pop. Why did I get that? Well, not many people actually know this. But even though I'm not a huge Pokemon fan, I used to watch it when I was in high school. The Volpix was always my favourite Pokemon. In fact, I've got this little uh, plushie that I bought on eBay that sits up on my monitor. I should actually have a TY Beanie Baby Fox that sits on that one, but it keeps falling off. It's actually here. It doesn't sit up here very well, unfortunately. If you sneeze, it'll fall off. So yeah, I've got the Funko Pop. Um, I've got some Lego related items. I have got... I can't remember her, it's bad. I'm a Lego fan and I can't remember her name. She's from the uh, movies. And it's going to bug me until I remember her name. But yes, she's just an alarm clock. That runs on batteries. And looking at that battery compartment, I'd say triple O. So we'll find some batteries up later. And we'll see if some of this stuff works. I've got a few items that need batteries. The other thing I've got... She was, she was five pounds, and he was two pounds, and he is literally just a little LED lamp. That's it. And it looks like there's just four tiny little LEDs in there. I don't know if these are brand new batteries in there. I have got other batteries. I could try them. Smudge just got caught up on the uh, camera cable. So we got him. Uh, what else have we got here? I've actually got a French model. Solido is a French company. And it's got the price on it. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And most of it on the back there is in French as well. I think, I can't remember if this is now my third or fourth Salido model. I've got a couple of trucks on display over there. Uh, oh, nope, it's my fourth. I've got two trucks over there, I've got that fire truck, and I've got a car. And I've got a bottle of Pepsi in here that I forgot to put in the fridge. 
Right, next up in here. Which costs three pounds each, a bunch of uh, Lego trolley bags. Lego signals. Uh, I don't actually know how many I got. I think there was five. Got a roller. Oh. Uh, police quad bike thing. Uh, garden tractor. Police boat. And a little ambulance car thing. Simple little uh, poly bag sets and smudge just fell off my leg straight off my Lego helicopter. And all she managed to do was knock the front wheel off the helicopter. <laughs> I guess I spilled quite well then. Right. Not one of them moves on this evening, haven't you? Now we've just got a bunch of um, little die casts in here. A tiny little old Lesney there. Fire truck. I think I paid about a pound each for these. Another Bedford because I can't resist the Bedford TKs. That one is actually the think. Yeah, that's the harder to find burgundy bodied one. It's a shame, it's in relatively good condition, it's just missing the tailgate. But I think I've got one with bent rear axles which has the tailgate, so I might steal the tailgate from that one. Um, this is actually for a model railway, a Volkswagen van. Lima, I believe. Might go with one of their car transports. It looks identical to the vehicles that came with the Lima car transporter. Another Ford Corsair matchbox. I say another because I've got about three or four of these now. Just because I want to um, restore them. And that's meant to have a car transport trailer with it. I think I might have got rid of my spare ones. I did have a couple of the trailers. I think these last three is it for this bag. I'm not sure, but going by the size of it, I think that's um, a 176 OO gauge scaled car as well. A little plastic thing. And we've got uh, a little matchbox Astra. And I've got the security version of this now. I have got the ambulance as well. Very futuristic. That's a corgi. Quite futuristic looking thing. Would you wondering if that plastic glows in the dark? I doubt it. Kind of looks like it does though. Okay, on to the backpack. Ooh. Oh, this backpack is heavy. Okay, so I'm just going to start with whatever's on the top. So I've got a little, um, is that an Eevee? Or is that what the Eevee, um, I can't remember what they call it, you know, what the Eevee changes into. Evolves, so that's it. Polka doll. Pokemon Center. Warning. Choking hazard. Yeah, either way, the EV was my second favourite. Uh, that's the charger for the laptop I'm going to try and fix. Still, brand new in a packet. This is actually a bicycle light. Never seen one of these in my life. But it's actually a brake light. I've got the um, you know the long version of this where you put the two D cells in the bottom. I've got loads like that, including ones with Halfords written on. But not a square one like this, which is actually a brake light. Which I don't know if it's been stored somewhere damp or what. But there's a couple of screws that have gone rusty on the back here. And so has the bracket from the looks of it. 
Um, so it might have been used and then just popped back in for its blister pack. So it does just pop open. I'll see if I can find some batteries for that as well. See if we can get that working. So, item number one. Oh no. It's uh, more stuff to see if I can get the laptop up and running. Now, there's always at this particular car boot at Alsham, there's usually at least two stalls there that just have rows and rows of boxes full of random crap, basically. Just random knickknacks, brick a brick, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they sell it all for 50p. Well, actually it was 20p, but he's now 50p. <laughs> and I found not one radio control Ford Mustang, but two. This one feels heavier, so I've got a feeling this one's got batteries in it. That feels a lot lighter. Um, and the antenna's fallen off, but it is in this backpack. I have got it. Um, and I have got at least one controller. Well, at least I hope the antenna is in here. I put it in here. Anywho, I also bought... So I have this habit of getting bored with radio and arm clocks. Get bored with looking at the same one. I quite like the look of this, and it's a Sony. So we've got a Sony radio arm clock here, and it does work. I've tried it at Mum's. Odd thing with this one is it hasn't got a wire for the antenna. And for the nine volt battery, um, you know, memory backup, it's got a little clear plastic door under it. But, uh, yeah, I actually quite like that one. I think it was only like two quid um, and I'm hoping this is going to save me having to go rooting around in my box of adapters which is buried at the back of the cupboard um, just outside the door here the front door because um, my brother wants a couple of um, ethernet switches and I found those I just need to find a 5 volt power supply well looking in one of these 50p boxes I did find a 5 volt power supply I just hope the connector on the end is the right one otherwise I might have to um, find another method right what we got here oh that's fallen out of its box this has got its box but it's not PIFCO light it's got the fluorescent tube on the top there and torch on the end no idea what batteries this take, possibly double A's. Just a switch that switches between tube and torch. But yeah, that did come with its box. Can't remember what I paid for that. There's the box, or what's well, it's all come open now. I mean, I can glue one end back together. I might do that because I think it's worth keeping a box for this. The PIFCO Dual Light. So it's got in the box a bright spotlight beam and strong fluorescent floodlight. We'll see about that. Because we'll put batteries in that later and we'll see if it works. Random Casio calculator that I found in one of them as well. Just because I like Casio calculators. And this one looks like it's more for like the office desk, just looking at it, you know, the home office, that sort of thing. There's Mum's Lenovo laptop. Like well, I said, it turns on. Um, appears like it's going to boot, and then it just sits on a black screen as far as it gets. So what I want to try to do is reinstall Windows, just in case Windows got corrupted. Now I'm hoping that this Dell battery that I found in a random box as well, not on the same stall, this, I actually paid £4 for this, but the reason I paid £4 for it is because it's got a battery indicator on the bottom. And it is still holding charge, as you saw from the green light briefly. Hang on, let me just press the button again. There you go. 
I'm hoping it's going to fit at least one of the laptops that I've got because I've got Dell laptops galore that need batteries. So hopefully that's going to fit and act as a replacement. I hope. If not, I've just got a spare random Dell battery. I bought one of these as well, one of these sort of weather station things. Tells you the time, the temperature, blah -de blah blah. Um, air pressure and humidity and all of that. This actually feels like it's got some weight in it. It's just got batteries in it as well. No, no it hasn't. Ooh, it's got a stand. Uh, it looks like there is a tiny bit of leakage on one contact, two contacts, but other than that they look pretty clean. It doesn't look like there's enough there to actually affect um, the operation of it, so got a Dremel down here I can soon sort that out. Uh, to go. Ah, and there's the other antenna for that other, for the yellow Mustang. Which I think may have just fell off onto the floor. Oh no, it's over there. No, it isn't. Can you find it, Smudge? All oh, right, so. Cars. <clears throat> Preferably without my voice disappearing. Cars. Cars, a little husky Citroen. Matchbox double decker bus. I'm buying these deliberately now whenever I see them because I have got so many that are in rough condition like this. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to add to the collection. <laughs> see how many I can actually get. So we've got the um, police Range Rover Takar rescue unit. Missing its ladder. The paint works in fairly good condition. We've got a majorette. Um, bank security truck. See, there's um, a guy that does the car boot that sells a lot of die car stuff. It's almost all he sells. Um, and I've also bought from him when he's put ads up on um, Facebook Marketplace. He lives just around the corner from me, actually. But he's got a box there as well where he chucks in a lot of other random stuff, you know, that ain't really worth a great deal. He just puts it in there three for a pound, so. Three, six, nine. I think I've got 12 in total. BP tow truck, which I've already got. I just want the tow hook off of this one. Because I've got one up on my shelf, which is rare, a lot rarer than this one, but it's missing the tow hook. So I'm going to steal it off of this one. <laughs> That's why I bought that one. Um, blue and silver, Rover Sterling. Oh! Just read the um, sticker on the side of that double decker bus. I don't actually have that one. So that is one that can go with all the others um, as a variation. Yeah, I do not have the um, around London tour bus one. Don't know what the other one is meant to be. It's too worn out. But I've got loads where the stickers have fallen off and whatnot, and they look more like they should be in a bus graveyard. That's one reason I'm actually collecting more. See how big I can get the bus graveyard. We're nearly we're there for that part of the backpack. I've just got a couple of items in the other bit. So we have got. A majorette Ford Transit minibus, the city bus. We have got the Peterbilt Shell tanker, with the grey tank there. We've got an escapee. <laughs> Another matchbox, Citroen. I think I've got a couple of those ones now. 
And another matchbox. Is that the Chevy Tahoe or the Chevy Suburban? It's made in Thailand. I don't think it actually says. Matchbox Mattel Inc. made in Thailand. No, it doesn't actually say. Ouch. And the one that fell on the floor, I can't get it at the minute because Smudge is actually clinging to my knee. I don't want to move her because it's hurting enough as it is. Ah, she's got off now, so let's grab that. It's another one. I've got quite a few of the, or when I say quite a few, I've got a few of these. The old Plymouth Fury Matchbox Police. I do several variations of this. And that one is actually in pretty good condition, which is why I got it. Right. Oh. I think we've got about four more cars and something else in there. Another matchbox that I haven't got. And an older matchbox. Let me, uh, I can't remember if that's the Ford Thames compressor truck or generator truck, one or the other. I haven't got that one either. Right, so I've got two more cars and something else. So we have got Rover 2000, which is a Vanguard. I actually quite like the Vanguard's models. And I think it's an Austin A35. I haven't checked the bottom yet, and me and Mum couldn't read it. It's. I have to say, the um, writing on the bottom is just not very clear on this one. Um, he had two of these. He had a white one, and I was tempted to get both. But I don't know why. I just like that sort of British green colour. So I got that one instead. Now, I also found a light bulb there as well and it has actually got here in one piece. And he, I paid just 50p for this. Stonelight mirror bulb. This is what I really like adding to the um, bulb collection. Older stuff like this. Um, Myself, my mum and my stepdad think this could be 50s going by the um, box design and that font on the box. But we are just guessing. But that's the lamp. It's got a nice shiny silver bit. And it's got a bayonet fitting. If you look, there's no pins to lock it in because this is designed apparently to go in and then you rotate it to angle the light to wherever you need it. Apparently that's what you're supposed to do with it. How that would stay in the socket, I don't know, but I'm assuming you would put it in a lamp holder that's mounted that way, like above a picture or a mirror or, you know, a mirror or something. Um, I've not actually tried it yet because I've only just emptied the backpack. But yeah, I thought for 50p, and I've never seen one of these before. I'm going to take a photo of it. Maybe not tonight. I might take a photo of it tomorrow. Because I'm on a couple of uh, Facebook groups for people who collect light bulbs and have an interest in lighting and whatnot. Someone may be able to uh, shed some light on the subject. Uh, pun intended. Smudge just jumped in the air for absolutely no reason. Um, Stonelight mirror bulb with special type revolving bayonet cap. Guaranteed quality products. The mirror bulb is fitted with a special type revolving bayonet cap to allow of the bulb being turned in the holder and so throwing light in any required direction. You can tell just from the way that is worded. 
that it's quite old because it wouldn't be worded like that these days. You know, cap to allow of the bulb being turned in the holder and so throwing light in any required direction. Uh, the mirror finish is of extra quality and guaranteed to withstand 500 hours burning without discoloration. And that's what it says on the other side. Apparently it's a 25 watt, 220, 240 volt, um, number 4186. if that's the price because if that is then this would date it to pre-decimalization in the UK I don't know if you can see that but I think that's two and six I might have to photograph that and uh, show mum or it could be a date There's another pen squiggle there, but I can't... Now that's longer than the two, so I don't think that is a number one. I think... You could. I don't know. I'll have to do some research. Ah. Here is the antenna. That must stay. Right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the camera. I'm going to clear all of this off of here. Apart from what I want to um, put batteries in and see if we can get working. And uh, yeah, I'm going to grab my tubs of batteries as well. I've got a pack of double A's down here, but I think I'm going to need some triple A's as well. Let's lay that there. So um, I'll be back in a few seconds. Right, it's already taken me about 10 minutes, but been about 2 seconds for you guys. So, oh, I forgot to put the uh, little bits out of the way. Ow! Uh, she's charging around like a bloody lunatic now. I'm going to start with this one, I think. So, do I have to actually unscrew this fully, or...? This could be C cell, and I didn't bring those over. <laughs> I know where there is some. Bear with me two seconds. Right. Got some. These are Duracell rechargeables. And believe it or not, I got these from a radio I got at car boot sale several months ago, actually. Um, and it wasn't till today that I realised these are rechargeable. Um, I can't remember what I paid for the radio, but it was less than what these are worth, brand new. So, I'm assuming, looking at that end, they go in this way. Anyway, it takes three. Okay. Quite know how this locks in. Right, so we've got tab, tab under there. I'm going to hold that up now and see if it can't see it doing anything. got them around the right way. Have I actually put them around the wrong way? I know these 
is good because the radio worked. Maybe they're not good enough. Ah, I see. Oh. I'm sure it's in the off position for now. Still none. So, if this is not working, or well, these batteries are not working, maybe they, they might have gone dead. I don't know. Have I got a multimeter at hand somewhere? Is it close? Let's put that back on. There is actually a little um, thread that this goes into. Like so. Maybe this has actually got to be screwed in to work. A Phillips is not going to work on a flathead, is it? We'll come back to that. I did have a multimeter here. Somewhere. I'll just try those. Or I'll just go to my drawer in a minute and uh, get three that I actually... Let's go and get three that I actually know do work. Because I've already tested them. Right, uh, let's do it this way. Ooh. Right. I haven't got three identical, so this is only for testing purposes. If it works, I'll go and get some new batteries. I just don't want to go spending money on batteries if this does not work, if I can't get it to work. Right, so I'd actually had them round the right way the first time. Picked up the Phillips again. Have you finished Captain Noisy while I'm trying to film? Yeah, I can see you sticking your head up. Let's screw that on. Ah, that works, so it could be, yeah, the fluorescent tube side doesn't, so it could actually be then, either I needed to screw that down, oh, it's just sort of sprung into life, I don't think the batteries are that powerful, I'll have to check them, yeah, so either I needed to screw this down for it to work, or those rechargeable batteries might need recharging. Let's, uh, let's try them again, shall we? Get out of there. You always get one that gets stuck. Let's just try them again. I said they were charged, they were working the radio fine. Three times I've gone to pick up that Phillips screwdriver now. Nope, they are charged, so I have to put that down. Well, it's not about a bright fluorescent floodlight, it's, uh, it doesn't look that bright to me. Maybe it's got to warm up a bit. Cool. The torch bit is actually pretty good. I'm going to leave those batteries in there now. The only problem is it takes three, so I've got a spare one over now. <laughs> Never mind. I'll get some brand new ordinary batteries. Obviously, either one or two of these, or even all three a week. Or it could just be because I mixed two brands. One of the reasons they tell you not to mix brands, but uh, I haven't got a lot of choice because I haven't got three matching. I just want to know what batteries go in there because that's quite a large battery pack. I know this works. Triple A's in 
here, triple A's, double A's in here. Have I got four energizers? No, I haven't, so I'm going to open up the new pack. I don't know how well charged these are, but that could be why it's dim. Like, it could be that these are just uh, old. It could also be that these some batteries have leaked at some point. See all the crud. It's not actually gotten onto the main contacts. I don't know if you're going to see it, but there is crud in there. Let's just put in four brand spanking new energizers and see if it's actually any brighter. Because it could be that those double A's are weak. They might not be brand new. You know, I've bought it at that car boot sale. I don't know the condition of the batteries, do I? I'll put four brand spanking new ones in. Like so. Now we'll press the button. Maybe I should have left it alone because now it doesn't work. <laughs> Got a feeling I'm going to have to take this apart and uh, just give everything a good clean up in here. Just out of curiosity, let's put the Kodak back in. Give that spring a bit of a twang as well, so we can get some crap off of it. Whoop. Where did that roll to? Right underneath me. Not one of them where it works with the Kodak and nothing else. But don't tell me that's a brand new pack of Energizer, that's a dud pack. I would be happy if that's the case. I have actually had that where I've bought a brand new pack of AA batteries, not a big pack like that. Put them in something and they've been dead right from the pack. Right out of the pack. Yep, you put the energizers in, they do not work. I'm going to run a multimeter on them. Because there's something not right there. It should, that should not be the case. Just out of idle curiosity. One, two, three. Well, I've got four energizers loose in here. I'll just put the four out of the pack over there so I don't get them mixed up. Let's try these. things to go in. I actually think is it flickered with these ones? Yeah. It's gonna be the battery connections, right? So what I'm gonna to have to do, I'm not doing it tonight, but what I'm gonna to have to do is clean up the uh, the contacts. See if I can pop these out and uh, soak it in some vinegar or something. But for now, just so I don't lose the uh, lid and the screw. I'm not sure what that is meant to be. Is that? I'm guessing that's meant to hang. All right. Still can't remember your name. 
And I do hope there's no batteries that have been left in this. Oh good. No batteries have been left in this. Uh, I'm going to put a couple of Duracells in I think. Let's turn the alarm off. It is working! Very well, actually. Okay. I'll play around and set that later. I just want to, you know, put the batteries and things and see what works and what doesn't work. She is working great. What's our min? Alarm on, off. Time set, alarm set. That's real, real simple um, control. I see, you just hold down the alarm set, and then I suppose. Yeah, you just press the hour and the minute buttons. Okay. I suppose it is designed as a thing for kids, isn't it? So... Yes, I know I'm a big kid. Good. You have success there as well. Right. This one next. We need... Um, just some leakage around the edge. That clean off. Okay. You take triple EAs, double EAs rather. That's a good way to confuse it because the battery contacts are exactly the same on either end. First one that way, next one that way. We have life. We have green lightage. <laughs> green light gone off. Set, oh, we could put an alarm on this as well, so maybe get the green backlight to come back on. I don't think that's reading right somehow. It says that the outside temperature is 60 degrees. <laughs> Not in a million years in the UK. Inside temp 20 degrees. Humidity 65%. Ah, it's readjusting itself now. It's not got an outside tape. Is this radio controlled? According to this, inside temp is 25.2 degrees C with a 50% humidity. But it's got nothing on the outside one. This is radio controlled. It's got the frequency there. Maybe I've just got to leave it for a while then, and uh, it'll come through. I will know. Hang on. Ah, there's the button for the green light. It's on the top. Yeah, it's just. It looks like it is just two green LEDs on this side. That just. I'm sure Lidl's used to say oh, it says radio control down there. Duh. Climate. Yeah, I'm sure um, Liddles used to sell something like this. 
don't think that's the brand I used to sell, but find some way to hang that up now. We've got success there. Apart from one item so far that needs a little bit of work, and that's the light up Lego man. Let's have a look at this. The Halfords brake light. Right, get into it. There we go. Yeah, it's got four very rusty screws, which is a bit concerning. It's got some various fixings there, and it's got this little wire, but how does this work? There's some nuts and bolts in there as well. It's got fitting instructions. We might have a problem. And that problem is, I can't get screws undone. I've got these two undone, but I don't think they take the back off, no. Um, Yeah, all four of these I've rusted to the point where they're not going to come off. In fact, they've just been rounded off by this. Um, what I could try, but they're rusty so I'm not sure if it's going to work, I could put a cut and disc in my rotary tool and just cut slots in there to use a slot screwdriver and try and get them undone that way after leaving them to soak in some uh, WD-40. Um, be nice to get this open and working. The only other way I'd be able to do it is to drill the screw heads. And then I'd be left with a couple of studs the other side to get out. Or four studs to get out, which, come to think of it, might be easier. Let me put these in, put these screws back in so I don't lose them. Halford's um, high level cycle brake light. I am interested though, this is, should be the fitting instructions for it. Ah, I see how it works. It's actually ridiculously simple. Alright, I'll show you. What you've got, you've got this metal bracket here. This acts as one contact, just like it does on a dynamo light. So that would bolt to your frame, and you've got one contact there. The other one is there. And what you do is meant to be um, used on bikes with um, the old style caliper brakes, like vintage bikes have, like my um, vintage rally would have, for example and my road bikes, it would work on them, I could fit it to that. And you've got a plastic bracket there, which, ah, yeah, so, this little plastic bracket in here, you'd bolt that piece around the, um, oh, sorry, it's not on camera, around the, um, cable adjusting screw on the brake caliper 
then you would position your probe like that. So that would go in like that and around your brake thing. So when you pull your brake, it pulls, it closes your brake caliper up. And if you've got it adjusted right, it makes contact with that and the light comes on. It's actually ridiculously simple. There's literally just a little nut and bolt that goes through there. Two nuts and bolts because you've got one to go through there as well to clamp that down. I want to get into this. I want to get it working. I haven't got any WD-40. <laughs> I'll just drop the plastic bit. Where the hell did that just go? I've got a feeling this might have actually been used on a bike looking at it. Oh, I've dropped it somewhere. Oh, I hate when that happens. Couldn't have gone far. It literally just went straight down here. under my foot. Well, I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to put that back in there. I'll close that up actually. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put that in that bit. And the two nuts and bolts. Everything is here, but the fact it's, uh, you know, the state of them screws are never going to come undone. See if I can get a can of WD-40 tomorrow. Soak them in that for a little while. And then I'll try cutting the um, some slots in the screws and see if I can undo it with a slot screwdriver. That's the plan. Being awkward, let's put that in there, like that. There we go, it's packed away nicely. What I'll do with a bit of Halford's bit of card. Did I throw that somewhere? I was just going to put that back in here so it's all here where it uh, belongs. I'll put it back in later. Oh, it's right there. Goes in like that. If I can get that working and whatnot, I'll um, do a little video of it actually uh, in action. Right. I don't feel like there's any uh, battery in that. I mean, a kid's toy is going to have a screw in it, isn't it? So, we do belays, we are do belays. Let's put these Kodaks in, we'll use those. It's only for testing purposes. Is it? Don't know if you can hear, but there is smudge charging around in the background. Getting caught up on the camera cable. We've got red LED light coming on on that, so that must work. We'll turn the other one on, we've got nothing, so... Oh, I've got to put the antenna back on this one, haven't I? Got to find it again. Can I not pick it up off the floor? Anyway, let's just have a little peeky boo in here shall we? Uh -oh. We have had Duralink. I think all three of them might have done it. It's not beyond salvage this battery pack though, thankfully. Yeah. Yep, all three of them. So why you don't leave batteries in things. 
especially Duracell. They are very prone to it. Good batteries. They last a good long time. Very prone to leaking. Right. My screw fell out there. So... I'm assuming I'm going to have to take the uh, body off of that to fix it, so a little project for tomorrow. So if I can um, fix this one, let's see if this is going to work. This is lighter, so I know this hasn't got any batteries in it. But let's hope I haven't been left with a corroded battery compartment. I have not. We'll try these energizers over here. Oi, Missy. <laughs> it works. It works. It's alive. I've got a funny feeling. These are both 27 megahertz, so that controller will operate both. I knew that controller would operate one of these, that's why I got that. Well, that's why I got both. They're only 50p. In fact, he didn't charge me for that controller. He's charged me for the cars. Well, I don't think he did anyway. No, well, it might have been the um, 5 volt adapter I got that he um, threw in from that. Thing. That one works. Turn that off. Right. So let's just um, do that to the springs and just twang some of the crap off. That might be enough to get this to work. I've got some energizers here. I'm going to say I should have another one over there. It's on. Temperamental, this one though. Well, that could also be because it hasn't got this on it. <laughs> I lost forward and backwards. Yeah, okay, so this one's going to need a little bit of work. Take this body off. This one's got the wheel alignment lever missing as well. I suppose either way, I've got a spare car, haven't I? I've got one for spare parts. And I've got one that works, so. I want to know if I could pop this off. Just turn it off. As long as I can get it off without doing too much damage. Oh, these are pegged on. Look at that, it's a peg. That's one peg popped out. We'll pop the other one out. Might as well have a little sneaky peek on the inside. There's your second peg out. I don't think it's getting a good um, 
battery connection either because it didn't sound very powerful, did it? And it should because they are good energizer batteries. Right, so if we've got the body shell off. Ah, I see what the problem is. It's actually snapped. Uh, is there a way I can... Undo the screw and just sort of hook it around somehow, just hook it back on. Is that going to work? And the answer to that is nope. Um, how am I going to do this then? this in the morning. I actually wonder if I should bend that end into like a U shape and then try and hook that around and then sort of sandwich it all together. And clean out the battery pack properly. Well I don't think that's actually bad a bad haul you know there's uh, only two items that need a bit of uh, TLC. And repair work. Um, I also got, which I left over at Mum's because it needed to be in the shed anyway, I got a Panasonic radio, a portable radio, which I want to use in the shed, which came with Duracell batteries and works. Now, what I'm looking for is the screw that came out of the battery pack. Although well, it doesn't matter because it's actually clipped in. Right. Maybe I should put these plastic pegs in here so I don't lose them. Not too deep so I can't get them out again, but just enough so I, they don't fall out. really need to get that going when I mean, I've got the blue one. Spare body. Spare antenna. Yeah look, it's broken. You can see antenna connection there. It just goes across to a screw post. And then that would have gone on there like that and snapped off somehow. Yeah, there's probably a number of ways I could uh, actually fix this. could just cut that other section down and put a butt connector in there and connect the two together that way and then just bend this you know, around that screw post to hold it. It means that's going to be a bit shorter but it would be one way to fix it. Well, that's it. I'm not going to do it tonight. It's getting late. I'm going to do that uh, tomorrow. I'll put some decent batteries in the controller as well. Right. I think that is it. And I'm disappearing off the camera, aren't I? Hang on a minute. Let's rotate it. There we go. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, as always, links to Discord and whatnot will all be in the description down below. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing and uh, I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye!